Hi y'all, welcome back to my shop. Today we're going to talk about how you can uh, hang a green screen so you can easily raise it and lower it. I use a green screen occasionally for special effects uh, on, on the background, similar to the way a, a TV newscaster would. Uh, you can turn the thing easily from green to, as, as I show in this instance, I can turn the background to, to black and, and then I can uh, superimpose myself over a different background such as this uh, sunset image. Uh, it's got a few artifacts and wrinkles uh, because I didn't do the lighting get rid of all the, all the wrinkles. Uh, but it, it, it's, a, it's a real pain to have to set this, this up and change this slide it onto this rod. I have these wrinkles that I have to get rid of by using something like uh, this downy uh, wrinkle release I've got to spray on it and that doesn't get rid of all of them. It, it's just, it, it, it prevents me from easily setting it up and using it maybe as often as I'd, as I'd like to. I can't leave it permanently in place because it would get coated in fine sawdust and then it wouldn't be green, it would wind up being brown and that that would be a problem. What I want to show you uh, the, the idea I got from my friend Gord Rock Alberta, in Alberta, Canada. Uh, he's got a really nice nice solution that I'm going to implement. And I'll have a link to his video at the end of, uh, at the end of this video because he uses uh, uh, the green screen very creatively for special effects to add humor to his videos. So off I went to the local home improvement store and picked up some uh, PVC uh, pipe and I also and I had to cut it off to get it in my SUV, uh, but I measured the size screen and and just cut off about three feet. I bought some uh, cord. Doesn't have to be green. It just happened to be, happened to be uh, uh, green. And then I bought a, a package of screw eyes. I probably could have bought uh, 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 some smaller screw eyes in a package, but I wasn't sure exactly what size was going to be best and. And it was, it's cheap to buy this package with multiple sizes. Uh, I might be able to give you a better sense of what size to use after I finish this project. So I'm using 2 inch Schedule 40 PVC, which uh, shouldn't bend too terribly much. And that's 2 inch uh, diameter. I'm going to uh, take this piece of dried wood I've got and make uh, uh, cylinders to go inside to hold the pulleys. Uh, you know, once you've been turning a while, it seems like you got plenty of wood for projects. You just look around your shop, and this was not kiln dried. It's a piece of, uh, it was green wood, but it's been sitting in my shop for a couple of years this short, so I believe it's going to be dry enough. So, I'm going to make these two pulleys. So, I'm going to make these pulleys approximately five inches. So, I'm going to use, I'm going to use a piece of kiln dried poplar. Mark that hole because we're going to drill that so I don't want to lose what that, where that hole is. And we're just going to use a compass to draw these out and then we'll go over to the bandsaw and, and cut, these, cut these off. I'm going to wind up fastening these to the cylinder that goes inside the schedule PVC with a 3 inch drywall screw so I simply get a screw template and figure out what's the right size in this case 964 and then we're going to drill a hole on the drill press. I'm not a very skilled flat worker and I, everything I learned I pretty much learned on, on my own but one of the things I learned when you put in a drill bit make sure it's running fairly true so you got it seated in, in the center. Uh, so we're going to and then the other thing is make sure you got the, your, your workpiece clamped down Okay, I've got this thing mounted between centers on the lathe. Uh, I've got to turn it around. It's like a bowl blank and if the grain is running perpendicular to the bedway, which means I'm going to use a small 3 8 inch bowl gouge. You do not use a spindle roughing gouge, that is the one that's been forged with a weak tang because the forces on cross grain like this are just too, too strong and you can snap it and the wings can get you in trouble. This is for spindle work only. Turn this down to up to a fairly reasonable speed, oh maybe 1300 is running very true. And I'm just going to come in from the side and just get this round. You notice the angle of the, uh, the cutting edge is about 45 degrees, so I'm getting a slice. Got this anchored on my hips, so I'm just moving, moving Turner stance. 
Uh, so before we go any further, we're going to get a pencil and uh, we're going to mark the center of this. And that's how deep I'm going, which is actually about uh, three, a little over three quarters of an inch. Now let's get a feel for how how snug this is. So that's that's a little too snug. It's going to rub too too much. So I'm going to. Uh, take this tool and just take a hair shade off of each of, of one side. And I see a little bit of a tool mark on the other, and that's got it. And that, I parted down to that that margin skew. I'm going to use my detail gouge. And I'm going to I'm going to pick up the cut here, and I'm only going to go down just a little way. So if the cord was uneven, it will at least flow back in that slot. And that's got it. We're just going to knock off these edges. Some, got some tear out there with that. That's not pretty. Uh, hmm. Got a lot of tear out there. I think I'm going to come back in with a skew, try to clean up those edges just a little, just a little bit. that's going to be close enough. I'll get some coarse sandpaper in there and uh, knock, out, knock out some of this. I'll wrap it around a, a thin, thin board like this to uh, just get the edges cleaned up a little bit. You've just got to get that slot size so when you pull the rope, it is going to it is, it's going to uh, turn that that pulley, and this is working just fine. This is just a shop apparatus, apparatus not a piece of uh, uh, fine woodworking. I'm just going to put a nice oil finish, oil wax finish on. I'm going to use Mahoney's walnut oil and, and beeswax, and I'm not going to do it in the very center where I might glue up that cylinder. Let's put a little bit on the sides. I'm not going to put it at the very bottom either. I want that. I didn't sand at the very bottom. I want that to be have uh, somewhat of a friction surface. Okay, here these are side by side, and you can see they're fairly close. And again, the critical diameter is the distance uh, the cord will fit, so there's some friction, and that the diameter in the middle are both equal. If they're off a little bit on the sides, it's not going to make a difference because the cord's not rubbing here or here. So this is a little bit wider than two inches. Uh, it's about 10 inches long, and I'm gonna, I, was, I was originally thinking I would round it uh, into a cylinder and then part it off. But in order to size each end to perfectly fit inside those pipes, I figure it's going to be a little, I've got to fine tune each end, and I would have a little harder time getting the center on the side that, hadn't, that I cut off in the middle on both pieces. So I'm going to take this back to the bandsaw and cut it off into two 5 inch pieces. So now it's just a matter of turning these two pieces uh, around to uh, round two inch cylinders, get speed up a little bit, anchor the tool on my hip. So I'm chucking this into a set of jaws. These are 75 millimeter bowl jaws, they're a little deeper. Uh, so I'm not putting a tenon or anything on it. It'll grip it pretty good. But before I tighten it down, I want to bring up the live center to make sure I've got it perfect nice and perpendicular and then I'll just clamp down on it a little bit. And this is going to hold it plenty tight while I true up the face of this. True it up a little bit with a uh, with a small bowl gouge. Now before we put it back between centers to get the final uh, final sizing, I did mark a P on those two faces, one on each on each one, to uh, of where the pulley uh, the pulley is going to mount. So this is the end that's going to slide in. That's going to have the pulley that needs to be nice and square.
And we turn us a nice little pull knot just because we're wood turners and we can. Put a little, uh, some of that same Mahoney's finish on it. So the cord starts on this end, it's tied off on a, uh, on a screw eye and then it comes up and then across to another large screw eye, it comes down and then both ropes go through one, one screw eye. Let me demonstrate. Okay, the weight's going to take out some of the wrinkles. And now we pull it up. But right, I'm pleased with it. It looks like it'll work. I'm going to bring the cord over. I had a bit of a challenge trying to figure out where to put a cleat. This lay is not going anywhere. It takes a lot of cord. So I'll just use this as a cleat. Wrap that around a few times. I could have bought, paid four dollars or so and bought one, two or three dollars, but this will work just fine. Take the extra cord, get my pull plug on it, and there I am. Okay, I'm, I'm very pleased with the operation of this. I think it, as a result it'll, it'll allow me to uh, get my rope tangled up. It's a lot of rope from this thing, uh, but I think I'll be able to use this a little more and I hope to incorporate it in my uh, remote interactive uh, uh, club demos. I appreciate any comments y'all got. If so, leave them below. Uh, I'll have a link here to uh, Gord Rock's uh, video on the, that got me inspired to this. Y'all stay safe. Come on back here.